JJ the CPA here, hope you're doing well. Hey, um, I wanted to just put out there, I know there's difference of opinions on things, but um, I read an email from one of the CPAs that, um, that had uh, sent me an email they got, and I guess it went out to like 5,000 people. So I won't name who the CPA that sent me this, and I won't name who it was that sent it. Um, but it even says, uh, and just to be, this is the email, not from the CPA. This is the email that is from this person that went out to 5,000 people. So I'm going to run through it if I understand it, but, but they say in the email, this person, uh, if you tell the department of UI that I told you, go steal all you can, you won't get in trouble. I won't back you up. I know most don't want to hear that, but this email list has grown to well over 5,000 inboxes and that is a big group. Well, you know, so anyways, I don't know, um, you know, the context and if this is going to 5,000 people, it's clearly not going to the person's clients that they would know their circumstances. Um, and so, you know, when there's a difference of opinion on things, um, you have to you have to keep in mind that any advice and and I've said it on my live show you have to really know the facts and circumstances um, so when someone's interpreting the law but this is an interpretation of the law that it's not a difference of an opinion okay it's helping somebody take advantage right and I've been my theme has been on the PPP money that that there's no strategy it's what you're gonna spend right so you have to do that first to have the forgiveness but this person's devised and then I had another CPA tell me uh, that there's a CPA tax attorney that like people pay for the advice of this person um, and they've been to people's offices. And so I think what you have to be careful of is that, you know, until final interpretations are out, especially if you're clearly trying to tell people how to cheat the system, uh, that you should definitely wait until the SBA comes out and clarifies everything. And, you know, people that are sending out this email and or, you know, CPA attorney, right, slash attorney, um, they're giving out advice on how to cheat things out. The, the good thing on them doing that is that the SBA is going to be aware of that. And then, of course, they'll address it. Um, so this is not even a difference of opinion uh, of mine. I'm just showing you what the law says and then what I want to kind of a, the, the this uh, video is a little bit of a warning that, if you come across this advice, um, all I can say is at this point, it would be my opinion to tell you, you, you know, you can't do that. That's not really how this is going to work. But on April 18th, I can't show you where the SBA said that. But let's be clear on a couple of things. You know, the law, the CARES Act, um, when it's talking about, for example, the ERC. And by the way, uh, on the ERC, if you've taken PPP, Hold on doing anything because we need further IRS clarification. But anyways, um, you know, it says in law, if you're above 100 employees, you do this. If you're below 100 employees, you do this. Well, it doesn't address, well, what if you have 100 employees, right? So the IRS interpreted that, right? And the IRS, is, is, it seems clear they're going to go with, well, 100 or less and then over 100. Um, and then, you know, in the tax law, it didn't define um, utilities, um, the SBAs come out because they have full authority, uh, as they indicated. They came out and for self-employed um, have indicated in their determination things that you wouldn't think are utilities at all. So I've got another video on that. I've got a list of it on my website, jjcpahelp.com. Um, but I would never have thought in a million years the things that SBA is saying is utilities because like gas in your car that you use for business, okay? So all to say is that if you're coming up with something sneaky, okay, and you know it's sneaky, and then you're selling it, okay, or you're sharing it, and you think that's going to make you look good, um, shame on that person. Um, not only do you need to wait till all of the information comes out, but if you know something sneaky, then you don't need to do it. And I and I think anybody who's watched any of my videos know that. Um, Anything that we're doing, we're looking at the law and 
you know, until the further clarification came out, for instance, on the employment retention credit, I'm still, I'm still a holdout on, well, I want the IRS to give us an effective date and then clearly define, you know, what happens if this happens, right? So I'm talking about the ERC, which this is not about, but more just to say that until we get final regulations, I've said, hey, you know what, on the ERC, we better wait. Um, so here's the deal. This, there's, there's this group, I guess, or a few people, um, the CPA attorney and then whoever this other person was, is saying, hey, I got an idea and here's how this is gonna work. And if you've watched any of my other videos, usually if something starts out that way, you already know it's not gonna be a good thing. And if you're in a situation where um, someone's telling you something and it sounds too good to be true, uh, then you really wanna make sure you're reviewing it and looking at it in every detail. So right now, if you just read it plain, right? There's times that I've read something plain and you're like, well, it seems like we can do that. So if you were to read this, you might go, well, it seems like we could do that. Um, but I'm confident that once the SBA comes out with actually further clarification and how it's supposed to work, I mean, there's only so much someone, there's only so much they can put in the law. Um, but that is this, okay? So if you look at section 1106 uh, in the CARES Act, and we're looking at number two, number three, and number five, and we're talking about the reduction based on reduction number of employees, so that's a title in there. And we're looking at salaries reduction and comparison, and that's a title there. And then rehires um, that talk about if you get the, e, the employees and the employee money back. So even if you're like, well, what? Where is it, JJ? Well, look at 1106, and then there's, there's titles, okay? Reduction based on number of employees, salaries reduction, and then the rehires, okay? So those are the sections I'm looking at. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, if, if you're of the mindset and you wanna argue that you can do it, please don't even contact me. I don't, I'm not gonna read your comment. I'll just delete your email. I don't wanna hear how you think you can actually do this because you can't, and I will tell you this, even if for some reason you ultimately can, you've defrauded the government knowingly. So the law does say if you do something only in the tax law, if the only motivation is tax savings, that is not a, a, a proper reason to be able to take advantage of something. Now that's the tax law. So with this, it's clear that this is taking advantage of and defrauding the government both ways. It would be a crime. And I'm hoping that the individuals that are selling this, promoting this, because it does say in the tax law, people that promote schemes, okay, they get in trouble. So whoever sent out that email to 5,000 people, uh, maybe they need to get in trouble because clearly they're promoting something that is clearly a scam, not even like, a, oh, I, huh, I didn't realize that that would have been a scam. Okay, the CPA attorney that's going around and providing this information, when it's like, hey, for $59, I got a secret for you. Um, I hope they get in trouble, to be honest with you. Uh, so shame on that person. Um, I don't I don't know uh, who this other CPA attorney is, so I don't know, and I wouldn't call him out anyways. It's called being the gentleman. But if this is now spreading like wildfire, JJ the CPA is needing to tell you, even if somehow you technically think you can do it, I doubt the bank's gonna let you do it because they have to interpret it. And, I, and for sure the SBA is gonna come out and say, um, no, it needs to work this way, and no, you couldn't have just done this, especially if you also did your, you had your employees do this. And so what am I talking about? So the scheme here is that you take the PPP money, which by the way is a grant, okay? And the grant is you need to spend it on payroll. So the scheme that's being told is send all your employees on unemployment. And then they return right at the end of the eight weeks. And then you share the spoils with all of them, okay? Um, to the minimum amount. So then what you did is you got the, the overall payroll back to what it would be for the eight weeks to potentially technically get forgiven. And you've gotten your head count up right at the end, right, to get forgiven. And so your employees were able to get um, unemployment, maybe even the owner's able to get unemployment. Do not do this, okay? If you're just watching this video and you're not paying attention and all of a sudden you listen right now, 
What I'm telling you is do not do this. It is defrauding the government to say, hey, go and collect unemployment and then after six weeks come back and I'll give you, in essence, a bonus. I'll give you a, some extra money when really only it's gonna represent compensation of the prior six weeks, okay? You also have to look at what is in the law and is intimate in the law is, it's what were you doing before, okay? So like with the ERC, it, it clearly states, well, whatever was being paid during the period, okay, that you're taking the credit, it has to be the same pay, reasonably the same pay as the prior 30 days. And when you look at the CARES Act, and this is dealing with the forgiveness in 1106, you're comparing information during the covered period, which is eight weeks, to the first two months in 2020, and then also uh, at the beginning or, or February 15th through June 30, uh, 2019. So we have all these comparisons. So what it's saying is in number two, reduction based on the number. I just want to point out to everybody that it says average per month, okay, on this part, okay? So just make sure that if you're doing this scheme, you, you really take note that the law says literally average per month on the number of employees, not just what it is on the last day. And then in section three, that's talking about the salary and reduction comparison. Okay, you're comparing it to other numbers that already happened, okay? So there's no reason for me to explain this to you because if you're gonna do this scheme and now you wanna be shown that you shouldn't be doing it, I'm giving you enough information that you'd be like, oh, okay. Because on this month, right, per month, so you have two months. So if one month you have zero and the next month you have 10 employees, then you would have an average five for that time period. You're committing a crime if you're gonna tell them, oh, I had 10. Okay, just because you brought them back in the last week or two, you don't have 10, you would have equivalently five. And then same thing with the salary. So here's, here's where they're, they're hanging their hat on it. So this is breaking the law. This is gonna prove to break the law. So do not do this, do not do this, okay? So putting employees on this pandemic, okay? And then in the last two weeks, rehiring them and then paying out the PPP, no way it's gonna be legal. There's no way. And even if it is legal, shame on you for taking advantage of this last aspect. Shame on you. And that is this. What it says in here in number five, okay? is that if you get the employee number up and you, re, you eliminate the reduction in salary, then all is forgiven if you had a reduction and you had a change in the salary. So it's saying, hey, go ahead and just get your employees back and get the pay back, and then all will be forgiven on number two and number three, no big deal. And then I've heard people like, well, you know, if I just hire everybody back, I'm good. And I've said, well, I mean, you have to spend the money first, okay? Meaning you had to have spent the money. Now, I don't see anything actually in the law that says it has to be spent evenly. Um, I do see some things inferred by the SBA that it's payroll that was incurred over the eight weeks. I do think the spirit of it is looking at the amount of it. And I understand there's a difference between the spirit and then what the law is, but the SBA is leading towards, I believe, um, what will be clarification of, you know, like, well, what was the payroll paid throughout the time, okay? Because where they're, where they're hanging their hat on a technicality that you have to understand in the law, there might be a technicality, but it's just because there hasn't been final determination on it. There's no way that the SBA is going to be like, well, gosh, we weren't aware of that. We didn't know that we held that issue. Well, gosh darn. So what they're saying is, hey, for six weeks, Boom, employees, go ahead and go on unemployment. And then when you get back, I got money, money, money. Some for you, some for you, and some for you, and some for you. And look at me. I got everybody back right at the end. I got my PPP money. I don't have to pay it back. Look at me. Boom. Okay. No way that the SBA is going to allow that to happen. No way your bank's going to allow that to happen because your bank has to sign off on this stuff. Okay. The bank, I would assume, would want to look at it. Okay. So here's the deal. Okay. If you want to do that scam, you better wait for further clarification. 
If you wanna do that sham and you do it and you successfully get away with it, then you were a criminal that somehow figured out how to open the back of an ATM and pull it out and what your excuse is, well, no one caught me. Someone told me how to open the back of the ATM and I just pulled the money out. So what are you gonna do, huh? What you gonna do, okay? So if you're subscribing and paying for somebody to provide that advice, you should stop right now because here's the deal. There's no way that's proper. There's no way that's correct. And even if you can hang your hat on the technicality, right now, this law is so new, we haven't even gotten to the full phase of forgiveness. The SBA, S, SBA hasn't pulled out full verification and the SBA can change the rules at any time. JJ the CPA, out. Don't break the law.